it. Now there, there we have now a flawless uh, distance tracking calculator with that shows a sliding bar for your progress. It shows you how far you've gone. You can go forwards, backwards and it will calculate all of your distances just fine. So we are back and first I want to of course thank my Patreons. If you're not a Patreon, joy. Um, yeah, I thought I'd show a list. Love all those people. They're phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> but anywho, I wanted to make something where we can get a path and right now I have a very very simplistic controller uh, the, it's just a character controller with getting vector and I made it glow so we can see it nice and easy and we can travel and I want it so we can get the distance across the whole thing right so in order to do that um, <clears throat> just to help uh, with one of these parts for you. Uh, technically I've already gone ahead and done it, but I'll show you what I did. And I went to tools and I got Pro Builder. Now if you don't know what Pro Builder oops, is, Pro Builder is a mesh building system, I guess you could say. Anyways, it's, it's on the package manager. You can check out Pro Builder. So I'm just going to go new poly shape and I'm literally just going to go something like that and then make it a little bigger and then export it, call it good. But before I do that, um, the important thing of doing this and the whole reason why I would do this to even begin with is to place it somewhere, align it so it's you know, pointing uh, on its Z, right? That's the whole key of this whole thing, is once you get it there, to um, where are we here? Is to, I need to get a vertex. Grab a vertex and set pivot. And I don't need to flip normals. I that should be good. Anyways, so there. Now I have this thing and it's facing Z, facing forward. Right. So now I've already gone ahead and did that. But ideally, we want to place them in here uh, facing the path that we want the player to go and I'll show you what I did is I created them and I just I made it a red material and I just place them so that they're kind of facing the direction and you, you, you kind of want more during the bends but beyond that like the distance between them really doesn't matter you just kind of want it so that if they're bending you get kind of a higher re resolution and if you want to add some extra for higher resolution, that's fine too, but it's not a big deal. So I place them all as a child to an object. Now these things, once they're in there, and the whole point of the arrow is just to help you visualize, like this is what we need to do, right? Because if you look at them, their Z is facing forward, right? And that's that's the key thing so I mean you could do this with boxes too you don't have to build cubes I just do that because I'm special I suppose maybe anyways but you would have the you would want to be turning these cubes so that they are facing a certain direction the thing is I mean for I'm zoomed out and then if I'm not clicking on it I can't see what direction it's facing so it's just easier to build these little arrows they serve no other purpose other than just setting this up I mean, once you have them set up, you can disable them like that. They're there. Cool. So I want an array list. And 
what we want is a ray list get yeah, one of those uh, I don't think it really matters it should be the same so uh, I'm gonna get all of the points which because I have them deactivated I'm gonna make sure that this is ticked on uh, not the parent though so now we have all the objects and they're gonna be in the list right so if I just hit play you know uh, come out of there so we can see it you know there's all our objects Just like that. So <clears throat> now that we have those objects and they're in an array, we need to tell um, the player like how to dictate if we are. Uh, a past these or behind these individually now because of the curve it can be kind of sneaky so uh, I was playing around with this a little earlier actually and the best I found to do this was now that we are here we have all these children we simply make an integer and this is our position and it's, it's zero was fine to start all right so now that we have that we also need a reference to our player just drag them in and let's array list get and we are going to get from the points at our position okay so we, we get the position now that we have that uh, I'm gonna get this action called get angle to target so we're gonna take this guy here versus oh, versus the player right and I'm actually gonna do this part twice actually mm, yeah right and it's only because I because I because I need to do it every frame and I need to do a flow compare, but I find if I try to grab the angle and do flow compare at the same time, even when the actions are split, it, uh, it ends up getting zero when it fires to zero first. I think just the way the this action's written during the frame. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna to get this again. And I'm gonna do this one every frame. And float compare. And if the angle is 90, if it's less than 90, we have passed it. Okay, so all, all we're kind of saying is if, if this is us, or well, this is the arrow, and we are here. Our angle here is actually 180. And as we come up either side at here we hit 90 so once we go beyond 90 now granted this isn't I mean you could technically be over here and it would still go we could always add a, a distance check on it as well if need be but we're just saying that if we go beyond this 50% mark to whichever way this thing's facing 
then we've passed it. So that's that's kind of what that's stating. Right now, what we're going to do is have another array list, and this is going to be uh, a measurement. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, okay, we, we could do that. So, so really, what we what we, what we do there is if we are if we have passed it, we can now change um, our current point. So all we do is int add. Um, our position we add one and then we can literally just loop back and that's it and then to go backwards uh, what we'd have to do is we need we need a bit of a loop here but let's let's figure that part out after Let's just get the forward part working. Okay, so if um, yeah, all right. So let's make another FSM. Add FSM. And this can be our actual calculator. Let's call it Cal. Cal the calculator. So all we want to do is get position. Of, and again, I'm going to need the player. So let's make a player variable. And we have a starting position. From there, we can array add. You can do an array list for this too. And we need an array of positions. And that was those over vector three. So we're gonna add our start position. Actually, we, we probably shouldn't do that in there. Um, and that's because really we need to array resize. Is we want to set our positions to zero. We need to zero out our distance. And then after that, we can add our starting position to the array. Then get FSM int. And we're going to go look at our position. Our current index position. And then once we're there, all we want to do is let's put this in a new FSM, our new state. We want to array list get next. points the n index is going to be our current index position we have a loop and we have a done and it is type game object and when we loop through it We want to 
want to get the position of the current array item. And we want to add it into the array. And just loop back. That's it. And when we're done, we want to get position of the player. And add that to the position. So we so the player's always going to be at the end of the of this array. So now that we have that, this array in here gets set based on where we are, how, how far we've made it through. So now it's just a matter of array get next. We're going to go through our positions. We're going to loop and we're going to done. We have our current array item. Oh, do I already have it? There we go. Current array object, then, so be it. Okay. So during the loop, all we go to do is we need to store the index. Int compare. Actually, you know what? Let's not even do that. We can skip that. Let's start at index one. So we're not we're not going to count the first object in the array, which will be the starting position. So what we're going to do is int subtract. We're going to look at our index of array and we're going to subtract one from it. And then we're going to array get that value. And this is the last position vector three operator. So we're going to take our um, last position and <clears throat> we need the position of this object oh, we just need four okay, we need our Let's do this. Position one, let's not use int subtract. Let's use int operator. It will be a little cleaner, I think, because we can take our index one, subtract, and second position index. So now we can array get the second position that's the last position. So position one and last position. And we do the distance. And then we then we're going to take the total distance and add our add distance and then when we're done we just loop up and we reset everything and do it again so that should now that that's not going to do anything for backwards yet we're not pulling anything away from the array 
we're only adding at this point in time. So let's come out of maximum play. And let's pop open a couple things here. Right, so we have, he's just looping through. And we have nothing in our measure. Which is kind of weird, we should have something. Object 2. And our position is 2. So that part's right. should have positions we have four distance right now is 40. You can see it there. It's climbing. And it, it does work going backwards except for when you go beyond a marker. It'll start actually counting up again. And that's because we need to get rid of those markers. So if we Close that. Let's go up here. Doop, doop, doop. So say we hit the end. We are here. And we have a array out of index. So array add positions. Players position. So our total distance is 550. All right. <clears throat> so if we go over to our canvas and I say our max value on this slider is 550 because we just walked the path, then we can move things and this all that all this is is a slider and I changed the knob to be a little thing so let's go up here real quick and we need to we're gonna set this text but I don't want to just put in the the value because because it's a float You can get like point zero 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 one type of idea. So I want to do a distance and convert it something like that. So we'll only use one point. And then let's set the slider value to the total distance. Keep in mind, nothing's on every frame. That's important. Right, so we are going through a loop. index if it goes beyond what it's capable of that's where that error came in right but we are at 
as you see, it's working. In that aspect, right? So that I can go backwards a bit, but we need to fix it so that we can keep going backwards. And we got to fix the index. So on our way back, array list get length. So we want to get our points length. And we want to int compare. don't know if we should be subtracting one to that. I don't think so. Ah, we'll test it. Uh, if length and no, if our position to the length is greater, we have hit max. Beyond that, still good and still good if it's equal. So if it's good, we'll loop back. If it's at max, then Let's just do a float or int add. Right? Because we are taking our position and we're adding one. No, we don't want to add, we want to subtract. There, it just kind of says, you know what, we're at the end. <clears throat> there is nothing next, just go back. So, how do we get it so that if this is, if we're on the negative side, if we get copy, let's get position before. So what we need to do, we need to get the previous index. But if we're at index zero, there is no previous index. So I guess what I'm saying is we need a little state here. So if our index Is our current point is equal to zero we're at the start if we're greater we're we're good and if we're at start well I mean if we're at start I mean technically this works fine. In reality, that works fine. It's If it's good, then we need to do something very similar to this. Right? But we would need... Um, int operator is we, is we need to get the last object, our position, one, subtract, last object. And we have that, but we need this actually twice, right? So what we need to do is we need to get our last 
index. Um, actually, you know what? You know what would be even easier than that instead of doing all of that. We still need this stuff. So if we're here and we have passed and we're going to add, let's go here. Set game object. Let's do that. Instead of going back in the array and recalculating it out and re getting something, let's um, old object. So we're going to have an old object array and we can set that with our current point. We loop through. And now when we're down here, we can get the angle to our old object. Angle to old. Compare angle to old. And if it is less, no, greater than 90, we're going backwards. Right, so we have going backwards and we have has passed. So has passed is the same thing. Backwards obviously is something a little different here. Right. So what we would need is let's copy that, paste it here. If we're going backwards, oh We don't want to int add set uh, int subtract our position subtract one and then go. Now the old object though it's going to get a little tricky because that means as we loop around we have our position we're going to come back here so let's put this up here not every frame though just to make sure that's all working And that's just due to how these things calculate. I find this just works better. So we're getting our position. So we can't we can't set the one we are watching to the old one. What we kind of need to do now is if we take our position and operator. We could take our position and subtract one again. Um, and this is going to be a previous old position. An array get. Or array list get. the length in here. What, did I grab the wrong action? I did. Tight game object and we can store that one as the old object. So we have to kind of step backwards there, a little, a little tricky, I suppose. And then, and then that'll be that should all be the same. That should all be fine. The all right. Let's let's well, let's give that a whirl. Let's let's see what happens. I know it's kind of confusing. What's going on? Right. 
So let's just take our current position. I'll stick that as an input so we can see it out here. So we are zero. That makes sense. We move up. We're one. We're two. Let's go backwards. We're one. We're two. We're three. We're two. We're one. Okay, so it's, it's working fine. And if you watch our our little counter here, you don't have to use them both. I just put them there just in case you wanted to see it. We're sliding up the bar. We're getting a distance. We can go backwards, forwards. Everything's working just hunky dory. And by the time we reach the end, Is that roughly 550, 551, somewhere in there. And you just you just put that as your max value on your slider. Right? But like I said, I can go back and forth and I can get my distance along the whole thing, anywhere I am now. Anywhere in here. The only, the only kind of weird thing is if I go beyond here and go outside, right? See that? If I go there. It's measuring the distance, I think, from zero, 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 world order, or world position, not world order. Uh, so, I mean, we could fix that, right? And that should be a pretty easy fix, because if we are here and we're going through, and if this is zero, <coughs> Like, like if we if we if we if we look at the data when it happens, I guess would be pretty the easiest thing to to see it, right? We are, you know, we're at the index of two, we're at the index of one, and now we're at the index of zero. One, and once we hit the index of zero, it's just shit in the bed. So. What do we do? Let's go here and let's capture uh, this index. Um, we can, well, we'll, we'll use that. We can use it in two spots, that's fine. So, index of array. So, all we got to do is in compare. And if index of array is equal to zero. We, we need we need some sort of default calculation. If it's greater, we're, we're fine. We're good, right? Just do the normal stuff. But if it's a default calculation, see how we get all these positions and stuff like that? Um, really, all it is then is, uh, let's just get position, vector, Three operator. So let's get the position of the player. Oops. Get all crazy. And player's position. Let's take player's position and the start position. Distance. Store that straight into the total distance. Come back over here. There we go. So it's kind of our our default, more or less. We're saying if 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 we can't use our array of positions because we haven't passed anything and everything's negative here, uh, let's more or less. Oh, we still have some sort of negative. My guy's falling off the world. All right, let's. Let's see why. So in these objects, you can deactivate them. I don't know why I've got them all deactivated. Oh yeah, I guess I was probably showing you guys something. Oh. Right, but I mean, this here shouldn't be happening. We should be getting a distance from there to here. That's all we should be getting. Right, so here we see we're running, we're not running the default, right? 
uh, index of array and that's because the end index is showing zero. Our current index position is zero. So we should just be testing that, not this. We don't even need this one. I don't think. Nope. So let's say our current index position. Because if it's zero, like I said, we just want our default. And that's, now we're getting our default. Right? How's our numbers? Right? So now we're, we're there. And if I just go sideways, now granted, I'm still calculating this. But it's our position from the start. Right? And as we move through, we, we, we get those parts in the index so it adds up just fine. There we have said so now there there we have now a flawless uh, distance tracking calculator with that shows a sliding bar for your progress. It shows you how far you've gone. You can go forwards, backwards and it will calculate all of your distances just fine. It's just a little bit of array magic.